Courage will always require an element of leaving, and leaving is just plain hard. Today, God, I feel every one of these fears. I'm terrified, straight up terrified. I'm calling out to you to be a voice of truth and freedom. Tell me to settle down, to trust you, and to release every one of these fears into your arms of faith. I so remember sitting right here, right here in this space and writing these words the day before we said yes to God. But I remember saying, I'm gonna choose courage over comfort. In 2006, Gene uh, and I packed up our lives in Chicago, including our nine-month-old son, Elijah, and moved uh, down here to Atlanta to uh, work at a great church, North Point Church, and eventually Buckhead Church here in Atlanta, and loving our life. Um, built this house and brought Gigi home from the hospital to this house. Life was fantastic. Uh, but right around 2008 or so, we started getting a stirring that God was leading us out of an act of obedience to start a church where transformation is at the heartbeat, where we help people become who God created them to be. This was obedience. This is what God was calling us to do. And I was scared. I was scared out of my mind, but it was joy to say yes to God. I was working at Buckhead at the time, and, and Jeff Henderson and I worked really closely with one another. And we hadn't told we hadn't told barely anybody about what God was stirring in our hearts because I think we thought we were crazy. Um, and I remember thinking, okay, Jeff, I'm gonna tell him and he's gonna tell me if I'm crazy. Like if this is crazy and we shouldn't do this, he'll be honest enough to tell me. I'll never forget when Jeannie told me that. It was actually in this building and she said, hey, I think God's telling us to move back to Chicago to help start a church. And my response is, well, I think God is wrong. You need to stay with me, you need to stay in Atlanta. But when God tells you to do something, you, you wanna get on that freight train. I remember saying, I, I think God is saying to do this, Jeff. And I remember Jeff saying, then you can't say no. All of this was just an idea. All of this was just a we think, we believe, we, we hope. And I think that's what Jesus was talking about when he talked about faith. You gotta, have, you gotta have faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. As painful as it was to have Jarrett and Jeannie leave, uh, this was the right decision and I'm so proud of them and the church. So given all that God was doing and all that was becoming clearer and clearer, if not scarier and scarier to us, uh, it was evident to us that it was time for us to start Soul City Church. I remember us buying the URL for Soul City Church and then deciding, let's have a launch party. We were right in this room where we cast the vision publicly for the very first time and we packed about 50, 60 people into uh, this house, into this room, and to finally say out loud, this is where we believe God's leading us next and this is what we're going to be about uh, next was such an important moment for our church. I remember that night going to bed and thinking, this is real. All of the things that happened in this space and all that God has done, um, it is truly an only God story. I'll never forget leaving this space and, and what it represented to us in the, in the new adventure that awaited for us in Chicago. dear friend of ours, Dave, who lived here in Chicago and we'd been friends for years, we were looking for a space and we said, can you help us? And he said, I have a friend, John Searles, and him and his family, um, you know, they, they own this warehouse space in the West Loop and um, there's nothing in there. I remember the first time walking through this old warehouse, vacant warehouse space, and um, it, was, uh, it was like crime scene level mess everywhere and all Jeannie and I could see uh, was a church. We put together a, an official letter of intent, an offer that we made to the Searles family of uh, 50 cents a square foot, which by the way, we had uh, none of that money to cover that. I mean, that was all in faith and they very kindly and lovingly said um, no to that offer, which is very wise on their part, but we just couldn't let the vision of this place go. End of June. Uh, John Searles called and said, hey, let's let's grab coffee. And um, we 
went to the Starbucks over on Chicago Avenue and we sat there and you know we were catching up and talking and, and he kind of turned to the conversation and just said hey I want to let you know uh, my family and I we've been praying and we feel God's led us to uh, offer you the space the 22,000 square feet of space on the corner of Adams and Racine rent free for two years I remember him putting his hand across the table and the key was in it and him putting it in my hand and just um, yeah I mean I I was inside of a miracle of God in that moment when we got the keys and got into this space we'd work all afternoon tearing down walls pulling up carpet painting walls building walls anything and everything we could legally do uh, and then some we did and then all of it built up and, and led to our, our official launch when we opened doors for the very first time, November 7th, 2010. Wow, it was a really special day. We came to Soul City Church for the first time on the first day, on the opening day. Uh, and I remember walking in and, and really hoping that it would be a place that we could call our church home, but really not knowing what to expect. Just listening to Jerry and Jeannie cast the vision for what they wanted it to be. Hearing so much about Jesus and how um, he's so foundational to the church and to um, our relationship with God was actually amazing to hear over and over again. Even in that first service, I was like, yes, it should be about Jesus. Our lives should be about Jesus. And I was so pumped to hear that. And so the first time that they said, we're going to start doing baptisms, I think we both felt that like that tinge of the Holy Spirit saying, this is the time to say yes to that. And so we, we emailed uh, the church and said, we want to do it. And uh, we were the first people baptized at Soul City. Being the first people to be baptized at Soul City was, I think, something really special for us that we're always going to remember. I remember after two years uh, being in this space rent-free, we were able to pull together enough resources to actually put a down payment on the building and to buy it. And at the same time, a group of angel investors came along and said, uh, you know, this church is growing so much, it's um, expanding, let's also buy the land right next to the building. We knew we weren't ready to build our transformation center, but we knew that God certainly wasn't done with our church and our church kept growing and growing and growing and so we had to get really creative and we got to the point where there weren't any more services we could add and there weren't any more walls we could knock down and we knew it was right at our fifth anniversary uh, we've been praying and planning we knew that it was time to move forward in faith and so we invited our church into the biggest faith raising adventure we had ever been a part of uh, as a church, as we rolled out the vision that God had given us for the Transformation Center. So we set out to raise $7 million. And I remember thinking early on, every person that I, I told said, are you sure? Like, <laughs> that's, that's big, that's audacious. And I remember thinking, like, we've always been called to courage as a church. This is not a fundraiser, this is a faith raiser. And so we had a a commitment night after everyone had asked God for where how he was leading them, believed that God would provide them with the resources to give to this, and then we committed together to doing that. Our leaders did that first on the land. I remember that night. It was a powerful night of prayer and worship and celebration as all of our volunteers and leaders and our staff came forward and made their commitment to God. And then our church joined in that and um, trusted God like we never have trusted God before. And I've personally never been a part of anything like that before and then not long after that to be standing on the land again as we had our groundbreaking celebration to see our church out there again as we worshiped and celebrated believing that God was the one who was going to do this we just get to play a part it was so faith forming for us to see this dream this vision really literally become a reality as this space was being built and every week you know something new that you could come and see and go oh my gosh that it's really happening when i think about the ways he has transformed us and all of the ways that he's growing us as a church it's thrilling to see this transformation center but to me it's never been about the brick it's never been about the mortar it's never been about 
how many seats, I think about the people that are in this space and the love that pours out of the people in this church to one another, to this community, to this city, to this world. To see lives being changed before your eyes, to see what transformation looks like in public as people are finding new life and growing in their relationship with God. It's story after story that this church is built on, story after story of salvation, of transformation, story after story of restoration, of healing, of hope, of lives literally being changed, families being changed, marriages being changed. It's about real, ordinary, everyday people having an extraordinary and transformational encounter with Jesus Christ. Everyday, ordinary people saying yes to God. And when I think about what God has done with all of those yeses, I can't wait to see what God does next.